everybody. Welcome back to NSB Custom Cars. Uh, this video that I'm putting out is I've gotten a lot of views and some people asking questions on my little lawnmower that I put a front end loader on. So I'm going to do a, uh, a pretty quick video here and I'm going to go through and give you all the dimensions and how I put this on. I'm going to raise it up, show you underneath and show you everything. Uh, hopefully that you need to know that if you want to build one and put one on if you can weld if you can use a cutting torch and if you got some tools as a, a band saw or, or ways to do some of this you shouldn't have no problem so uh, let's get started uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the material that I've used on this my main square tubing that's the big square tubing that I have on this is the piece that goes underneath the uh, uprisers and the piece that shoot out is six by two inch square tubing. And this is my little gauge here to give you the thickness of your steel, which I'm pretty sure I've done checked this one. This one is 12 gauge steel, which is right at 109. And that's the base of it. You could tell that this piece was a piece of metal that they bent. So this is a seam right through here, which I had to weld up. They already had stitch welded. What this used to be was a, a house trailer frame. This was probably 80 foot long. And in the center of it, they had taken uh, four by two square tubing, which that's gonna be the other piece that you're gonna need. And they had this welded on there, which I had to cut it loose. And this is where the axles were on for the house trailer. So it was basically like that. And then down the ends, they tapered them down. But that's what I used for all the, uh, the uh, main pieces. All the brackets that I used to mount the cylinders, I used this square tubing, which is a little thicker. It's gonna be 187.5, which is seven gauge. And I took, you can see all these angles I cut, I would cut it and once I got it where I wanted to put my hole and then I would cut the top of it off which I would show you here on what I'm doing on this. Let's go over here to the lawnmower and let me show you what I got. So pretty much that 6x2 tubing goes all the way across the bottom, 6x2 coming up and 6x2 running out and then I've got my four by two running all the way down. All right, so this piece that runs all the way across to the other side on the bottom, six by two, <clears throat> is gonna be 34 inches long. Then the piece that's coming from the bottom to the top, this is the uprisers, are 26 inches long. And then the two that's going to be running outward, which is from the longest point of my angle. We're looking at 27 inches. Now all this can be you know, within a half inch. It's not like you have to have a whole lot on this. Now I want to show you one thing that, that when you do this, that you need to keep in consideration. I do have a small angle here, probably about 10 to 15 degrees because when I put this on, this was straight up and down and this is level going straight out with the bucket on the ground level. And I wanted a little bit of angle here because I want down pressure to be able to pick the front tires up off the ground. So when you mount your cylinder in, you know, you, you run your cylinder out maybe by an inch, inch and a half and then mount it with it down. That way, when you pull the handle back, it's, or push the handle forward, it's going to push down on the bucket, pick the front end of the loader up. And that's going to come in handy when you're digging. It's going to come in handy even in steering with a heavy load on it. So let's go to this four inch front beam. Let me show you the uh, length on it. And that'll give you both sides of the same. So on your four, three foot. That's to your tallest point. And I'll give you these angles here. So you're about 10 degrees on that angle. 
And then on this front angle, we're gonna run out here. Give you a quick angle. About 30 degrees on that angle. So if you get that geometry right, you'll be fine. All right, here in the, the front, I put a piece of pipe in here, it runs across. And then I've got one down here along the bottom that uh, runs all the way across. And the bucket, of course, is uh, pretty much the same thickness as the, the, the uh, it's just flat metal. You're gonna have to make your bucket out of whatever you can. Matter of fact, I made this bucket out of a tabletop, a heavy steel tabletop that I had is what I used on that. So I'm gonna uh, lift this up and I'm gonna show you the first thing you do is start building this. This, this that was pretty much just your material. I say, well, let's back up. I got one other thing. Here's your, some of your materials. Pumps. Now you can go TSC, uh, Northern Hydraulics, uh, just go online, type in hydraulic pumps. A lot of these are basic. These are a, a, a two inch pattern. Most of them are all the same. I think these flow 2.6 gallons a minute, which is quite slow for this front end loader. My front end loader does run slow. I would like for it to run a little faster, but it does have a lot of power. This is the first pump that I put on. It ran good. I did a lot of work with it and <clears throat> I was running it and I was holding the handle back and I got looking the other way. Didn't realize it bottomed out and I kept holding it and it eventually overpressurized. And normally it kills the motor, but on this particular time, it broke my pump. You can see that it cracked it. Cracked it here, here, and all the fluid poured out. So I had two more uh, pumps. They're a little bit different design, but they're both the same. As far as the pressure, what was different was this shaft's a little bigger. So to go to the, to the motor, to the pump, you're gonna have to come up with these, but you can also get the same place, you know, TSC or Northern Hydraulic. These are couplers. This one has got the big hole, which is one inch, it goes on my motor. And then you can start finding, you know, your smaller ones, which I, I had to buy one for this one. I had one for this one, which was this one here. No. I'll take that back. It was this one. So I had to buy a set which came with, with, with this one here that goes to this pump. So you're going to need, you know, this has the star, rubber star that goes in the center that puts both of them together. So you're definitely going to need that. You're going to need some, you know, a couple pieces of plate steel which I'm gonna show you. Let's go, so let's go underneath and let me show you on that. So we're underneath the lawnmower here. And as you can see, there's the, the, the rear end coming on up to the bracket that I put in and then the pump. So the first thing you're gonna do is pretty much get rid of the mower deck. Under the mower deck, you have this, uh, or after you take the mower deck off, you're gonna have these two rods hanging down on each side. They got a cable that goes onto it. And that's what picks up the uh, mower deck up and down. So you gotta get these off. You get these took out and that hole that this bolt was bolted in is gonna be your first hole that you're gonna use. But before you even start putting the main piece in going across for your front end loader, what we're gonna wanna do is let's do the pump first. So pretty much your pump, or let's say once the mower deck's off, you're gonna have this pulley that's coming way down to about where the pump's at, and it's got a great big pulley. So we're gonna take the bolt off the bottom. You're gonna have a bracket that keeps the belt from falling off, take all that crap off, and pull that pulley off. Then we're gonna cut that pulley pretty short. You see how much I cut? I'm gonna give you that dimension here in a minute. Uh, but we're going to cut it, we're going to put the pulley back on, then you put your, your block or your uh, adapter on, the rubber piece on, and then the pump's already on, the, uh, or the, bra the other side's going to be on the pump. But what I did is I took on this plate, you know, it's a little bit longer than what the width of the frame, 
and I took two pieces of angle, which you see right here and right here, piece of angle. And I measured the inside of this frame from here all the way over to this side. And I took clamps and I clamped this to that plate that same distance. Then you drill your holes and I drill these holes a uh, size bigger than what the bolt is because I want a little bit of play. And I bolted together and then I spot weld the nuts on. So all you gotta do is just take these off and you gotta put a wrench up here. Uh, also, right dead center of that plate, I drilled all the holes the one in the center for the shaft to come through and all my four holes to hold the pump on and mounted the pump. So once I got all that put together and this was all bolted on, then I brought it over and all you have to do is just slide that pump with the rub with this rubber coupler right here that's in the center to the two the teeth the teeth to match it up. You slide it on there and wherever this falls. Now I got washers in here and the reason I have washers is because I had to change this coupler out when I changed the pump out. And this coupler was taller, so I had to bring this plate down. So this used to not have washers, so you won't have washers on this when you do it. Once you get that up in there and you push it up in there nice, that you're not pushing it really, really hard. You just push it up there and make it, make it stay. And then I took some vice grips and clamped these angles in here, make sure everything's straight, and then weld it in. That way, you take the clamps off, then you can start the motor, loosen these four bolts, and... If there's any vibration, then it's going to self-center, and then you can snug these bolts back down and then tighten them back down. So once the pump's on, you know, that, that part's pretty much easy. Now, I will say, once you get all this off and the pulley off, go ahead and change that belt. If you don't change that belt, you're going to kick yourself in the butt because later on, this has got to come off, and you got all this other stuff in the way. So you do the belt now, it's a whole lot easier. You are going to be pushing... You're going to be, you know, using it a lot more with the front end loader than just a mower underneath it. So I would suggest to change the belt. So, you know, like I said, we got the mower deck off. Once that, once that's on there, the belt's changed. Now we're going to go to your first piece that we're going to put in. And what I did is two more pieces of angle. And I, you can see right here. On the, on the side of the frame, there's a piece of angle right here that I put in. If you look at it, you see the bolt that I've got in it. Now, halfway in the center of that's where my first bolt is. That's the bolt where those brackets had hung down. So I'm gonna take them angles, I'm gonna stick them up in here, I clamped them, I marked that first hole, I took them back off, drilled them first holes, I put them back on, bolted them on with a bolt. Then I came back in with a drill and I drilled two more holes, one on this side, one way over here on that side. Remember, this is not even on here. You're just doing just a piece of angle by itself. And then you get them all set to where you, know, you get the bolts in and just get them finger tight. They're not going to be real, real tight. Then you put this plate up there and you see where I welded here and I did on the other side, I did a weld. Same thing on both sides. I got four welds on it. Took them bolts back off, lower this down, put it on your table. Well, that sucker up good. Then you can put it back up here, and you can get you an extension, you know, with a with a swivel and all that. And I also did the same thing. I welded them nuts on there, when on the angle. So when I brought the bolt through, all I could do is put them in there and tighten the bolts down. So I got all that tightened on. So theoretically, I could take all this off. Uh, but once you get that piece on, you're pretty good underneath here. So we're gonna go back to the top. So pretty much, you got your pump on, and you have your bottom piece coming all the way across the bottom so you don't have your riser you don't have your piece going out or going down you have none of that on there now the next thing I done is after I got that done is I came over and I removed the handles that come in that, that makes your blade go up and down here's one of the brackets that was in underneath that seat underneath that panel all the way went all the way across had a handle on it that uh, would raise the deck up and down and then there's another little handle here that I took off that was in there a couple bolts you take off and that's what uh, engages the mower deck to start running so I took both of them off and of course when you did that there's a switch in there I took and had to take the switch on all the time so it didn't think that the mower deck was running and then you had to mess with that key but uh, 
I took all that out because I cut a hole in the center because I mounted a tank. Now I built this tank. So you got you must have a tank for all your hydraulics. And I don't know if we can see it, but there's a, a square tube and I put two plates on both sides. I cut the tube in the same length of the frame and I let that uh, plate come down on the frame and drilled some holes and bolted it in. And of course I put a couple fittings in it because you got to have an out and you have to have an in. I brought the end up uh, coming in on the top side of the tank, the out coming out of the bottom side of the tank, and then my hole to where I can fill it. And you know, all these fittings and stuff, you can go down there at Home Depot or wherever you want to get your stuff. You know, you, Ace Hardware, any of them, get all that stuff. Pipe thread. So, you, you know, you're going to have to have a tank in there. And, you know, I th at one time I thought, if, you know, if you buy a square tubing that didn't have a seam in it, like uh, the ones that I used, you know, this tube's got a seam. Down there. Let's say you had a whole tube, you weld that up, you can make one of these a tank. And I was going to do that at one time. But, uh, and that saves you some time there because, you know, you get to run your lines a little different. But at that point, once that's on, you know, I welded uh, these risers. I cut my risers. I put them on. And that's when I started doing my out and my down. This is all that bigger square tubing I was talking about that I cut the top off of with the hole drill in. I did cap everything, and I put a piece of pipe. I drilled a hole through this, put a piece of pipe in here, and then run the bolt through that piece of pipe that make because this is thin wall stuff. I wanted to be light, so I wanted it to. Uh, so on that particular spot there, and down here on the bucket, the bolt down there, I put a piece of pipe through this tube and also welded it in. So you don't have that problem squeezing together. Uh, it's just a two control bank valve. You can buy these. Like I said, at TSC or Hot Northern Hydraulic, again, you can get that stuff there. Get them online, probably cheaper. Your hosing, I had a lot of my hoses. I did have to buy these front hoses, and I'm going to tell you, they're not cheap. The hosing is kind of high. Uh, the cylinders, the two, this particular cylinder, and the front cylinder, I got it from uh, TSC also. The, the front cylinder I got off of eBay or not eBay, but Amazon. And while I was on Amazon, I found these bigger cylinders that I'm using, the bigger ones right there, actually online cheaper. But I got them at TSC, they already had the pins and everything in, so it kind of made it nice. These particular cylinders, which is standing out just a little bit long, I'm pretty sure it's a 27 inch cylinder. Yeah, cause see I'm at 28 now. So if it came on down, yeah, 27, 26 inch cylinder on the riser and I'm pretty sure these are just about the now these are actually a little smaller these are probably 22 inch from center to center on the front cylinder you know you're gonna have to get a lot of fittings to uh, to make everything two lines from the valve coming to the front I put a T on this cylinder a T on this cylinder and went straight across to the other cylinder same thing on the bottom Actually, I put the T in the center on the bottom, which was underneath that went across. Uh, other than that, once you get that plumbed, you're pretty much done. And in here was that big pulley. That was the big pulley that, that ran the mower deck. This is where I cut off. The other pulley is up in the, uh, the center up there. I'm going to give you a quick measure of how much I cut off, because if you have one of these little lawnmowers here, 2.87 is about what I cut off of that pulley. Other than that, the only other thing that you're going to need to do is I took on the back of my mower and you can see I mounted this piece of metal and that's where I hang a big tractor weight. It's about 150 to 200 pounds. It needs weight back there. This mower with this little front end setup will pick up more than what the mower weighs it will pick up to the back end comes off the ground. So it's, it's pretty stout. Your weakest point on the whole thing when you're done is gonna be your spindles on your front tires. Cause you gotta stop and think, your fulcrum point is pretty much the back of that tire to the front of the tire and then the center point right here is where all your weight's at. So 
from here back is all the weight that you got to hold the front down. You don't want a whole bucket load. You get off the mower to go open a gate and the mower turns over or falls down to the ground because the bucket's up high with a lot of weight in it. So you need that extra weight in the back. Especially with you and the thing back there, it makes it a whole lot better. I'll go take it outside and show y'all it running and operating, but the weather is not going to work for me. It's wanting to rain on me, so. So let me, uh, there's my big weight that I put on the back. It's a big tractor weight off a wheel of a tractor. Yeah, like I said, it's a heavy sucker. But it makes, it makes it work right. You can see it's, uh, all the way up. One other thing that I didn't mention in the video at this point is my uh, stabilizer bars. I did put in two pipes that go from here down to the frame. And you know, I stuck them in with uh, this up and just so happened when I went down it was like it was a perfect fit i didn't put them in like that it just happened to go i thought i was about to cut some of the plastic but i didn't but you know you'll put one of them on both sides also So uh, that's pretty much uh, everything on the lawnmower. If there's something I missed, you need to know. You know, you can uh, ask some questions. You know, put it in. I think we're on uh, Facebook and on YouTube. You can always put it in on there and ask some questions, and I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, don't forget to like us, subscribe to us. Until next time, bye.